dry bone is rising up. There is a shift in the atmosphere. The miracle worker is here. The promise keeper is here. The way maker is here. Jehovah Jireh is here. Jehovah Shammah is here. Jehovah the deliverer is here. Jehovah the lifter up of our head. He is here. And tonight, the first night of our Abundant Life Conference in this year 2018, it is my very special privilege to welcome a choice servant of God. He is a senior bishop. Hallelujah. So listen well, we have bishops and we have senior bishops. He is a senior bishop. Hallelujah. And he's the vice president of the College of Bishops at the Christian Action International Ministries under the covering of his eminence as Bishop Nicholas Duncan Williams. And if you are ready as I am, giving honor to whom honor is you, let us welcome Bishop Clive Mode. Clap your hands like you believe. Clap your hands like you are a winner. Tonight, lift up your hands and begin to speak in the supernatural wherever you are. Speak in the supernatural. In other words, speak with tongues. Divine stirrings, divine stirrings in our spirit in this church, in this place. Lift up your voice and begin to pray in the supernatural for a few minutes in the name of Jesus. Lamanda Hayandi Basanda Bahaya Rembroseta Balakatanda Bahaya Adigini Matanda Barunde Bese Katunda La Bahaya E La Damahanda Satanda Bahayanda Baha in the name of Jesus Christ. The Son of the Living God, uh, lift up your hands. Uh, uh, bind any negative current, negative energy. Break and override, overthrow spiritual host. Command unseen walls and invisible walls and barriers to fall. Clap your hands and command any unseen wall, any invisible barrier to fall by prayer in two minutes. Lift up your voice, pray, clap your hands. Any unseen wall, any invisible barrier, let it fall. Any door of opposition break in the name of Jesus. Remove every sanction upon our lives. Remove every sanction upon our lives today. Clap your hands and overturn the powers of darkness in the name of Jesus. Lift up your voice. Let the anointing come. Let the power come. Let the oil flow. The oil settles the matter. The oil makes the face to shine. The oil breaks every yoke. And the oil lifts up the bedding. The oil overrides errors and mistakes. The oil gives you divine immunity. Lift up your voice. Command the oil to come down. In the name of Jesus. The son of the living God. And all said with me, Amen. Put your hands together and be seated in heavenly places. Tonight is a very quiet night for me. I'm going to try to be as quiet as possible. Tomorrow we will get into the hospital of God and we'll make sure that all diseases shall be eradicated. Oh, your amen was weak. 
Tonight, let me pay tribute to whom tribute must be paid. The Bible said, I render honor to whom honor is due. The Archbishop Nicholas Duncan Williams will always tell you that what you dishonor, you will forfeit it. And what you despise, you can never become. So ladies and gentlemen, there is a leader in this house, a prince of this house. Stand to your feet, give the Lord praise for the father of this house, Reverend Fritz Odonko. Clap your hands and give God praise in Jesus' name. Glory to God. Hallelujah. When you see a man prosper like this, then inevitably there is a woman behind him. I've been in this business for years and I still believe that for you to prosper in ministry, you have to be careful, the woman, oh, am I? You marry. Ladies and gentlemen, to get out of liability, this woman is a champion. Put your hands together for the first lady of this house. Hallelujah. Mama, we honor you, we salute you with your husband, we respect you. And the Archbishop Nicholas Duncan Williams brings a big hello to you and his greetings and love and power and anointing to all of you. If you believe, shout like you believe it. <laughs> Reverend Titilati has always been my good friend, a pillar behind this church, a father of a church, this great church, and all my great Krifi brothers here. God bless you. Senior Bethel, where are you? Are you still here? God bless you all. Tonight, let the devil know he's under your feet. Give the Lord a shout and be seated. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Let's, let's, let's get into the Bible a little bit. This evening, can I be quiet this evening? And then tomorrow, I'll jump some more. Are you listening to me? I, I believe that this convention was created in eternity before the manifestation in time. And therefore, the backing of God is guaranteed. Anything, anything we do here is orchestrated by God, is directed by God, is backed by God, and is blessed by God. Last week, I went into the spirit and asked God, God, what do I talk about at all because these are my notes. The Lord to turn my attention to something and he said, when you come be as quiet as possible to tell them what I want you, them to know and what you must tell them. Ladies and gentlemen, sometimes it is good. Our focus is on our externalities. We talk about the demons outside the church. We bind them. We, we break their neck. We imprison them, we try to murder some, we assault some, we batter some, we, we, we insult some, we pull some along. And ladies and gentlemen, it is a good thing to do that because prayer is important. But the Lord said tonight, may you come home and look at what is within the internal environment than the external environment. Because Sometimes, what is, what, what, what is so important is for you to understand what is happening inside of you even more than what is happening in, outside of you. I beg your pardon. Because Thomas Kinman said that when a nation is demoralized, you can take the nation from within without firing a shot. And so demons can destroy you when your inner capacity is minimal and is small. But I'm praying that today, before we leave here, there's going to be an increase in our inner capacity. Your amen will determine how far you go. Say in the name of Jesus. So tonight, we are going to deal with our hearts. Say my heart. We are going to deal with our candlesticks. Say my candlesticks. We are going to deal with our spirit and see whether the condition of our spirit will determine what we become or what we will not become. Because, and I'm going to make some critical analysis of some people that we don't want to hear 
some names we don't want to hear in the Bible. And I've never officiated any wedding for me to hear that, that somebody has been named after these two names. We have demonized them, criminalized them, bastardized them. But today you will realize that they are not at all bad like you thought. But at the end of the day, we will look at their attitude in a certain situation and the consequences that follow them. Can I go further? So turn with me to the book of Proverbs chapter 18, verse 14. That is a quick one, and I'll give you my anchor scripture. Proverbs 18, 14 says, The spirit of a man shall sustain his infirmity, but the broken spirit who can bear, I repeat it, the spirit of a man shall sustain his infirmity, but the broken spirit who can bear. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a very interesting scripture. And we will come to anchor scripture. But when you say the spirit of a man will sustain his infirmity, but the broken spirit who can bear. Number three, there are three things here. This sentence or phrase or whatever you want to call it has been broken into three parts quickly. The spirit of a man. It means that that is who draws his strength from God. A man can be aligned de depending on the condition of your spirit. If your spirit is weak, the God is in you. The God in you, I beg your pardon, is weak. But if your spirit is strong, it's, it's a guarantee that the power of God inside of you is big. Can I have somebody say amen? amen. So it is the spirit who draws his strength from God. So a man's strength can only be drawn from God by his spirit. Quickly. Then the, another phrase uh, will sustain his infirmity. In other words, will help him to bear up against trouble. Hmm. Will help him to bear up against trouble. So you can see when your spirit is weak, you cannot have the power to bear up against trouble and challenges. Number three. But a wounded spirit who can bear, which retires into itself and nurses its grief, who can bear? Which means that who can bear the wear of it? When your spirit is worn out, who can bear it? It means that you have no capacity to overcome troubles outside of you. You have no authority to deal with demons outside you. How can you say, I want to deal with ancestral spirit and familiar spirit and covens and witches and wizards when that which is inside of you is too small but i pray that today you may not have to open your mouth to pray when they see you they will bow their heads oh you can't hear me say amen you must be able to walk into a, a bosom without fear You must walk to Cape Coast without fear. Oh my goodness. Because your spirit will determine who you are and what you become in the face of adversity and infirmity. But I pray that as I speak, there's a generation of the supernatural that you are receiving something to increase and to stir up your spirit. Say my spirit. And so quickly, the spirit of a man, that property, the word Spirit is a property, is something you own. A faculty of a man called spirit and enables the body to bear up against trouble and sicknesses. Is that right? So a merry heart, that's good like medicine, according to Proverbs 17, 22. But a broken spirit dries the bone. I repeat that. A merry heart, that's good like medicine, but a broken spirit dries the bone. How many of you want your bones dry? No way. The word bone here means your structure. Your bone determines the structure of the body. Short bone, short body. Long bones, long body. Isn't it? So it is your bone that determines your structure. So every marriage has its own structure. Business has its own structure. Ministry has its own structure. But when the condition of your spirit is not good, by wounding, then your bone shall dry. So, so it means that your structure shall dry. But I declare tonight that anything that must be a structure for growth. Oh, I'm not ready yet. May you receive the power of God. 
Oh, come on, you didn't hear that. And so, and so, your structure can be your physiological structure. If your physiology is altered, then there will be the time to study pathology, diseases. I listen to me. But the six, he said, this is what you must do to bless the people. So that any benediction you give, you give it this way. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he lift up his light upon you and be gracious unto thee. And may he allow his countenance to be with you and give you peace. I declare that a heart that is broken has a bad countenance. But I pray that after this message, your countenance will change. Come on, somebody turn to your neighbor and say, drop it. Say, drop it. Tonight, what am I going to talk about? We are going to see something that can break your spirit. And I'm going to tell you a story today. Can we go on? Say, everybody say story. Turn your Bibles quickly with me to my anchor scripture, Psalm 55. Let's start from verse 12. Psalm 55, verse 12. Umbonakakrankrambrabokko. Tonight is a storytelling time. Are you listening to me? <laughs> Psalm 55, verse 12. For it was not an enemy that reproached me. Tonight I am coming home. Should I come home? Tonight, let me put the devil aside. Tomorrow we'll deal with them. But you see, the reason why God wants us to look at this subject today is you can't deal with demons when you are weak in spirit. What are you going to deal with it? When your arsenals are weak, don't try America. When your arsenals are weak, don't try Yemen. Don't try Iran. Are you listening? Don't try Germany. When your arsenal is full of kafutbay and tukbay, don't try them. But I declare that today, oh my goodness, the Saratoga shall be released. The M16 shall be released. The RPG shall be released. Say, I believe it. Let's be quiet for two minutes. Say, I believe it. Now, listen. For it was not an enemy that reproached me that I could have borne it. Did you hear me? It was not an enemy that reproached me. I could have done what? Born it. Into me, you know. I could have borne it. Then I could have. He said, neither was it he that hated me that magnified himself against me then I would have hidden myself from him. If it was my enemy who is doing this, I would have avoided it. And if it's the person I knew hated me, or hates me, in other words, misbehaving, I could have been okay. Now, let's go further, verse 13. But it was thou. Today, you may not like me, but that's okay. But it was thou. Turn to your neighbor and say, it's you. Oh, come on now. Today I will have problems in the house, but that's okay. Give the Lord. You say abundant life. This is what it means. But thou, a man, man equal. Did you hear me? My companion or my guide and my acquaintance. Now, a man, man equal, number one, my guide and my acquaintance. Hello? Did you hear that? Now, this psalm was written by David after... He has gone through what we call the bra, the betrayals, the rejection, and the abandonment by his own son and abandoned by his, the most trusted advisor. David has came to the Mount of Olives, weeping out of this devastating experience. He wrote Psalm 55. Can we go further? He was weeping. He said, a man my equal. Go back, go back. A man my equal. Now, if David wrote this scripture, who could be equal with David? With a little I know about politics, we have the three arms of government, isn't it? Constitutionally, there's only one gentleman. There's a first gentleman in this country. He's the first gentleman. His wife is the first lady, whether you like it or not. His children are the first children. His dog is the first dog. His cat is the first cat. His handkerchief is the first handkerchief. His saliva is the first saliva. Somebody say, preach on. So for David to say, a man mine equal, it means something to me. Now watch this. 
A man, my equal means someone I am a power with. So it means that when it comes to power, when it comes to God's agenda, when it comes to the constitution in those days, they were a power. But the difference was in function and functionality. Do you hear me? David said, a man, mine equal. Oh, glory to God. A man, mine guide. A guide is someone who holds your hand and takes you to a place you have never been before and teaches you what to do and how to establish yourself, my guide. My acquaintance, which means my friend, bosom friend. My bosom friend. Look at the verse 14. He said, we took sweet counsel together. We took sweet. Turn to your neighbor and said, have we ever taken any sweet counsel together? Oh, come on, come on. Talk to your wife for the first time. Maybe you are, you've been quarreling. Talk. Say, have we ever taken any sweet counsel together? And walk into the disco. And walk into the tennis club. Oh, and walk to the restaurant. Oh, and walk to Tessano. But he said, and walked unto the house of God in company. We took sweet counsel together. Hmm. When I take you to the next verse, you ask yourself, what happened? Look at the next verse. She said, you are my friend. You are my companion. You are my guide. We took sweet counsel together. All of a sudden, verse 15, sir. Let death. <laughs> no, you are not ready for me. I feel like... Let death seize upon them. Hey. And let them go down quick into hell. If you're a man, turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, go quick to hell. <laughs> oh, come on, turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, go to hell. You see how difficult it is to say it. Put your hands together for the Lord, everybody. Now, listen carefully. We are going to travel again. It said, let death. Hey, sweet counsel. Within two seconds, let death seize upon them, comma, and let them go down quick into hell. For wickedness is in their dwellings and among them. Wow. Then I asked myself, what happened? <laughs> the Bible, I was reading a book and it said, be careful whom you offend. It is not anybody that you must offend. There are some people when you offend, eh, their whole lifetime, they'll do anything to revenge until you are killed in this world. Is somebody hearing me? Now, ladies and gentlemen, we have just talked about how sweet, darling, baby. I'm okay here. Yeah? I love you, darling. I love you, sugar. I love you, honey. Uh, have I ever told you that I love you? And when I go to heaven and ask me, what did you do with your life? I said, I, I shared my life with you. I, I, are you hearing me? You see cemetery, you don't see cemetery. Are you hearing me? You see pain and say, honey, when are you coming back? You are the greatest thing that ever happened to me, honey. When I look at you, I see that Jesus is in me. You, you, are you listening to what I'm saying? You, you are my, my, my apple on my pie. You, you, you are the diamond on my velvet pillow. You are the cotton on my preprensa, the sugar in my tea. Within two minutes, you change your tongue and said, you are the before that ever happened to me. Come on, give the Lord a shh. I said tonight, no shouting. Say amen. amen. Then, then we ask ourselves, what's going on here? What's going on here? Something is wrong. True or false? Something is wrong. Who is David talking about? Now, the, it is said that this man that David was talking about was his chief counselor. He was a counselor higher than Abiata and Jehoiada. He was... The, in the Greek mythology, they said he was partly human and partly God. This was the man David was talking about. Greek mythology says he is partly God and partly human. Today, his name could be found in philosophy. Today, if you need the greatest wisdom, he is the adjective that qualifies that wisdom. And I remember sometime within the Cold War, Kissinger, the foreign secretary of the U.S., had to go <laughs> to Russia to negotiate. 
and the tablets read this way. It said, Kissinger needs this man, they used the man's name as an adjective to qualify the wisdom he needs to succeed in a negotiation. Ladies and gentlemen, I've grown and nobody has named his son after this man. This evening, I'm talking about a man I call Ahithophel. Put your hands together for the Lord. Ahithophel was an excellent, had an excellent wisdom and power to win the hearts of David's enemy and converted them to become loyal allies of David. His wisdom can go to Togo and win the generals of Togo, bring them to Ghana for them to become. Are you listening to me? That is how serious he was. Ahithophel could speak and he said, if you have never seen God speak, see him, see him, see God. So in functionality, David was the marketplace leader. In other words, David was the king, but Ahithophel was like God for David. Anytime you hear in the Bible and David inquired of the Lord, it simply means David inquired through Ahithophel what God was saying. So this guy was a guide. Oh my goodness. Put your hands together for Ahithophel. But something happened. And I want to go quickly to it. They were bodies. They were bodies. A man, my equal. My guy. My acquaintance. We took sweet counsel together. In church, we said some things. Today, everybody would want to say, may the Lord bind you. I, I, I turn the counsel of Ahithophel into foolishness. Ahithophelic spirit is in you. May you, the Lord, kill you. But let me tell you something. If you had taken the trouble to read the Bible carefully, today in our legal jurisdiction, David would have been liable three times because of the things he did to Ahithophel. But you see, it is not what you do to a man that matters, but how you respond when that thing is done to you. Can I go further? Oh my goodness, I feel like preaching now. Can I preach a little bit? Or can I speak a little bit? Now, this man was important today. To, to, to take people. But what happened? Bodies. To, Charlie, do you understand the statement? Took sweet counsel. A core plans. Took counsel. So, not just advice. Advice is too small. Not just a conversation. Counsel. David, do this. David, don't do this. The Philistines are coming. Run through the mountain. David, pursue them. Overtake them. Kill them. Recover all. David, no. Go, to sac go into prayer and fasting. David, rest here. But ladies and gentlemen, what happened? For now, somebody prays a prayer. May death seize upon them. A friend, lawyer of mine, will tell you that the sight of divorce is something he doesn't want to see. I love you becomes I hate you and it's big time. Don't look at me like that. <laughs> and, now, and now, what happened? Let, let, let's go. Let's go. I'll come back to you. Let's, what happened? Now, the Bible says that Ahithophel was David's friend. I've said it ten times. And Ahithophel had a son. And the son was called Eliam. Everybody say Eliam. I'll show you scriptures later. Say Eliam. This Eliam, hello, did not go to any other school. From the word go, he started his military academy from class one. No geography, no mathematics, no engineering, no law, military intelligence, jungle warfare, cyber fraud detection, bodyguarding. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Weaponry and all the tactics. So by the time he finished university, Ahithophel said, you know, David is my best friend and he's your godfather. But, but what we call family and friends, your life will be safer in the hands of of someone who is closer to you than the person who is not close. Are you listening to me? So he said, Iliam, your whole life, you are going to be a military man just for the security of David. 
So Eliam became the bodyguard, chief of what we call the elite royal or the elite palace guard. The elite palace guard, which means that the royal guard. And so he was the serious bodyguard. Those days when we say bodyguard, it was not air conditioner and Mercedes Benz and V8. It was not about big belly and black shoes and bare horns. It was about carrying feet. It was about sword and spear and shields. The skill that we need. Today, sometimes when you watch the TV, you see the president will be going and some big bellied men will be running and following him. And I'm waiting till the day a, a, a car will go on top of an ice water sachet. Boom! There we will hear. Whether they will run away or they will. Those days, you swore an oath that you would die for the king. So Elian grows up and he becomes one of the finest skillful warriors of David. So that the Bible described Eliam as someone swifter than an eagle and more powerful than a lion. And so one day, one day after the fight, those days kings fight all. They acquire lands by conquest. They do free SJSS by, by fight. Are you listening to me? Uh, 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 they do things by fight. Blows. Hmm? And one day, somebody nearly killed David. I don't think David was a nice man like that. His back full of scars. His face, cutlass, <laughs> sword marks, and so on and so forth. One day, somebody was about to decapitate David or cut off his head. And Eliam, the young man, sprang like a cheetah and cut off the enemy's head and saved David. But while saving David, somebody threw the spear and killed Eliam. Wow. Ahithophel's only son. Ahithophel. Turn to your neighbor and say, why do you hate Ahithophel like that? I'm going to compare Ahithophel with another name you don't like in a few minutes. What, what time is it? Let's go. Ahithophel. <laughs> Look here, Jay. Today is a very quiet moment, all right? No American way. Ghanaian way. Amen? Ahithophel. Say Ahithophel. I didn't say Ahithophel. I said Ahithophel. Uh -huh. So, okay, let's go. Are you ready? Eliam is dead. Now, all things being equal, let's, let's, let's look at life well. That is why I love to read Psalms and Proverbs. A proverb may not be a promise, but it's an illustration of a reality of life. Are you listening to me? And so, the question is that all things being equal, it is a son who buries his father and not the father burying his son. <sighs> because when you bury all your sons, about Chabuaye, is it not true? You shall be called a wizard or a witch. Maybe you didn't do anything. And so the pain, I hear the went. And when Eliam was dying, he didn't die alone, but left a little girl. I mean, Eliam, when he was dying, he had just, the wife had just delivered a baby. That's a, look at that. Think about it. Think about it. Whether you are an ankle bum. What's your problem? When your father, if you're in the belly and your father dies, when you are born, you are called ankle bum. That's what it is. So an antubamanian person was born. Say born. Say born. Can I go further? Uh -huh. Was born. And so grandfather had to take care of the granddaughter and I love the guns Bishop, they may not be guns let me speak to you a granddaughter is called Inabi in Ghan Inabi the actual meaning is Inabi Inabi grandpa granddaughter grandson relationship is better than 
father-son relationship. I'm telling you. Oh, put your hands together for the Lord. Wait till you grow. Wait till you grow. Clap your hands for, for the Lord to help you to become a grandfather. Put your hands together. Which means that long life. Which means that prosperity for your children. Which means that clap your hands and say yes. Ah. Grandpa named this child. Eliam left the name and grandpa gave the name to the child. He said, she shall be called the queen of prosperity because I gave back to her when I had come into position with David. I've become the, as, what do you call them, director of BNI. And I have pump, I have pageantry, I have what it takes. So I named my child after my conditions and situations. Haven't you seen some before? I went to a house. They were shouting, Mr. Usu, why are you Mr. Usu? Then he asked Mama, when Mr. Usu came, he was like this. A three-year-old boy called Mr. Usu. Then I asked, he said he was named after my uncle who was very rich and took care of us. Do you know that you can name somebody after a situation? That is why I love the airways. It's a nam. Are you hearing me? Oh, come on. I don't, want to, I don't want to worry my people. Lift up your hand. They will say, it's a nam. It's a nam. Maupe, maujro, efui, tatu. Are you? These are names. Eh? Maubejro. Ah, mawu tola, mawu this, mawu that, I said this. So, he named the child the queen of prosperity. But in Mizpah, when she attained maturity, they changed her name and call her now the queen of oath. Because they realized that materialism may be good, but may not guarantee you a future. So they lifted up materialism from her and gave her an oath that was connected to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I declare that you are living here. Oh, your amen was too small. With a name. Oh, my goodness. Oh, let's, 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 let's run quickly. Let's run quickly. Look at this. Look at, let's go, let's go, let's go to 2 Samuel 11.3. David, I will show you something. Second Samuel 11, 3. God help me to be quiet. And David said, sent and inquired to seek information after the woman. And one said, it's not this Bathsheba, the daughter of Eliam, which means that what? The granddaughter of Ahithophel. <laughs> And, and the wife of Uriah, the word Er and the Ayah, Uriah was a Hittite, a foreigner. It was a Hittite who converted him to become a loyal ally of David and served as a general in the army of David. So they add the word Ayah, which means a man of light, because he has seen light with his association with the people of light. Today, may you see light Oh, your amen was weak. Say amen. amen. Now listen. I hit your first grandson. Ladies and gentlemen, this movie contains strong adult theme and parental guidance must be activated. 16. Have you understood me? I'm not liable for what I'm going to say. Now look at verse 2. Asofu, when you made an inquiry and they told you that this was the daughter of Eliam and the granddaughter of Ahithophel, you should have abandoned the project. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Should have abandoned the what? The project. But you see, when kings go fighting, that is why we have to be supernatural. When kings had gone fighting, David was parabolating on his veranda corridor or balcony depending on where your tongue is on the divide. Are you listening to me? And when people are praying and you become carnal, 
you will only see an open heaven bathroom. And a woman who is bathing is called bath she or ba bath she ba. Oh, you are not ready to lift up your hand and say tonight the Lord will heal my heart. Say yes. Are you okay now? There are some of you, you are too stiff. May the Lord deliver you in the name of Jesus. I have suffered with my humor. They have been insulted. But since I realized that people have made money out of comedy, I haven't stopped it. Put your hands together for the Lord. When you insult me, it's none of my business. Are you hearing me? Hear me. Open heaven bathrooms. Today we are blessed though. We have covered bathrooms with serious styles, air-conditioned bathroom with jacuzzis, and those days it was open heaven. Open heaven. And where his house was, he could see it through the wind. And you see, when <laughs> I've given you an anti-liability statement already. Let me look at these people. They, are, they look like, okay. You see, when you look and watch, you will see Something in an open heaven bathroom. And there's not anything, not an animal, not a human being, but two banks. Bank, a financial institution, two banks. You will see stand chart. And you will see backless. I'm okay here. You will see stand chart. Those of you who are too crazy. You will see stand chart. And you see backless. This backless is in Tunisia. I can't be held liable. Stand chart and backless. Are you listening to me? When David saw it, say, I must open an account. <laughs> I declare that may you not open an account in stand chart and backless the wrong way. Say yes. Mama, I'm okay to go. Sorry about that. Sorry. Hey! Look, look, look at it. And it came to pass. Eh? What did be honest? Sorry, now she said, now she said, I eat off a la ruba. Now she said, a ruba. Now watch this. And it came to pass in an even time. Is that there? Uh huh. And David arose from the bed and walked. No, no, no. Okay, that is it. So, so, so. A woman washing herself, and a woman was very beautiful to look upon. If you have accounts with stand chart, is it not a beautiful thing? Let's go. And Barclays and the other banks. Amen. And David sent an inquiry after the woman. And one said, it is not Bathsheba, the daughter of Eliam, the wife of Uriah, the Hittite. Let's go further. Look at it. And David sent messengers and took her. The word took her means that without consent. And what they took her by force. Now, Everyone say, don't take me. By force. Pay for it. Oh, you didn't say it? Uh -huh. They took her. Can I go further? And she came in unto him and lay with her. For she was purified from her uncleanness. It means that she has just finished and she's on, in her unsafe period. So that when you touch her, there will be the establishment of what we call pregnancy. David didn't finish it. Number one, David raped his own brother. We took sweet counsel together. My man, my equal, my guy, my acquaintance. Rape because of you, my son died. No, 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 no. Get the seriousness of it. Some of you would have been throwing bombs by now. But you see, <laughs> so you see, Osofu, he didn't stop there. David, David, three counts. Eh? David, you rape this woman, and when you rape somebody's wife, you're in trouble. And because he had immunity, nobody could do anything to him. Can you see advantage? He didn't stop. Call me Uriah. I said, Uriah, go and sleep with your wife. Uriah said, when people are fighting, they don't sleep by their wives. You see the wickedness of David, so that if there is any pregnancy, those days there was no paternity test. Once you also entered, 
Safili. The pregnancy is yours. It's not me. Can I go further? Are you behaving that you don't know what I'm talking about? Amen. Osovo, you see, I'm, I'm trying to justify wickedness here. The before. Then when the guy was stubborn, he gave his own death warrant to him. And said, go give it to Joab. In other words, he murdered. My son is dead. You've raped the only thing I had as my joy, as my honor and pride. You've destroyed it. My Bathsheba, my the queen of promise. I mean the queen of, uh, 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 what do you call it? Queen of what? Oath. You have defiled her, destroyed her life. And two, a man who was not part of you, I went with my Hitophilic wisdom and my Hitophilian doctrine. I brought him out of Hittite and made him a loyal general who has fought for you to become a king. You killed him also. Absalom said, I will kill him. Ahitophel said, I will kill him. You see, when you are too angry, you see, uh, betrayal, rejection, abandonment will bring offense to you. He was so offended that a man who was the oracle of God, a man who heard from God and brought God down, the man left his ordained office and became, are you listening to me, an illegitimate soldier. Because he said, give me second, second Samuel 17, quickly. He said, am I, am I, am I saying something here? Uh-huh. That is why tonight, you must drop it. <laughs> Say, drop it, drop it, drop it, drop it. Let me, let, let me rehearse for a few minutes. Are you listening to me? He said, moreover, he told first said to Amsterdam, let me now choose out 12,000 men. The priest has now become a soldier. Honey, offense can let you leave your God-ordained place into a jurisdiction that will kill you and destroy your life. Tonight, if you have any offense in your heart, drop it. Because, you see, what is in your heart will determine how far you go in life. And I'm here to tell you what is before you is more and greater than the offense you are carrying in your heart. And yet, the offense will be a barrier that will not bring you to the place that God wants you to come to. Now, listen. Let me choose to, and I will arise and pursue. Listen, the bishop, the prophet, is now pursuing people as, as a fuache. Are you hearing me? Like a soldier. Now, listen, I'll pursue you after David this night. Let's go quickly. And I will come upon him. He didn't say we, you. I, Ahithophel. You were using the incense. Incense man has put incense down and has taken bullets. Church, until this is done, this church will not grow bigger than it is. But I declare, any offense in your heart, whether from your wife, whether you were raped, whether from your uncle, whether you were abused, whether somebody did something for you to be terminated in your appointment, please drop it because where you are going is bigger than what you have lost. Can I go further? Now, he said, and I will come upon him while he is weary and weak. Charlie, they did something to David there. Eh? Now, whilst he was weary and weak, and will make him afraid. Do you hear that? And all the people that are with him shall flee. And I will smite, I will smite, I will smite who? The king only. Only. I will smite him only. Ladies and gentlemen, David reveals the facts about betrayal, rejection, and abandonment and offense. And when you look at Psalm 55, let's go to verse 1 quickly. Then I will do an analysis and comparison and we close. Are you okay with me? You want to go? You want to go? Uh-huh. You see, Revelation, the Psalm 50 from verse 1. Number one, it is emotionally devastated. 
David reveals the facts about offense. Number one, it is emotionally what? Devastating. Then he said here, give ear to my prayer, O God, and hide me from that supplication. Go to verse 2. Look at what he said. Quickly. Attend unto me and hear me. I mourn. I mourn. Everyone say, I mourn. I can't hear. Say, I mourn. Say, I mourn. Me fail in my complaints. I am grieving in my complaints. You see, offense is emotionally devastating. Number two, it is physically damaging. Look at verse four. It is what? Physically what? Damaging. My heart is so pained. My soul pain within me and the terrors of death are falling upon me. Are you hearing me? When you're offended, eh? Somebody betrays you. Somebody says things about you. When you sleep, you feel like dying. Ah. But may you not die, may you not retaliate. Because what is ahead of you is bigger than what is behind you. Say amen. It causes nervousness. My heart is pounding inside me. It creates panic. I am afraid to die. It sucks strength. I am trembling with fear. It paralyzes. I am terrified. Number three. It is psychologically demoralizing. Look at verse six. I hope I had my version. But look at verse six. Oh. 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 First of all, I wish I could paint it what, the way they went through. They said, David himself, listen, oh, that I had wings like a dove, for then would I fly away and be at rest. His son, Absalom, his best friend, trusted counselor, have betrayed him. David was weeping. Can you imagine, or so forth? When people have betrayed you, as big as you are, running away from this church and weeping. <laughs> Can you imagine? It has happened. Your workplace, your friends, stole your money. The boy that you sacrificed your school fees for. After five years, he looks at you and says, you are too short for me. I'm looking for a pelu, a fair colored woman. Will you be able to forgive tonight? Oh, am I borrowing somebody? Now listen to what I said. I said, oh, that I, I had wings like a dove. For, then would I fly away and be at rest? Verse 7, quickly. Lo, then will I wander far off and remain in the wilderness. Selah. He said, what is happening to me? I want to go and remain in the wilderness. I want to remain in the wilderness. You see, you see the difference between let me cut a long story short. It is spiritually debilitating. Are you hearing me? It is helplessly disabling. It is relationally destroying. Tomorrow I'll continue from another angle. But listen to me. It has destroyed relationship. But there, there was something different between David and Ahitophel. Ahitophel said, I'll kill him myself. David said, may the Lord... <laughs> Because they were the legislators of the law, makers of the law, and they knew that Lord has, the Lord has written that touch not my anointing and do my prophet no harm. He said, for vengeance is mine and I will repay. When you take vengeance into your own hand, God has no business in that connection anymore. <laughs> When Ahitophel was looking for a cutlass himself to butcher David, David was committing him to God. Mm. Turn to your neighbor and say, hmm. So wait. Or kake machine mafu, kakum makun, kakum makon. In keleba machine, kasi beni yesu baba. Yesu mojan kam wenim, kasi amen. Do you understand what I'm saying? Women have gone out half naked because they were offended. Somebody had mentioned that they saw daddy. When your children call your father, their father daddy, you also call him daddy. Daddy has given a girl lift. You just close from the bank. 
took off your skirt and you were wearing your coat up because somebody said that you jump into your car and entered a place and you started shouting a small boy comes and says madam you are wearing coat without a skirt offense can destroy you but let me tell you some something and make it snappy that i get out of this place now listen to me david could have commanded the other armies to go and catch ahitophel he didn't do it he said god turn the counsel of, of ahitophel into foolishness ahitophel said me in the Anglican church, a woman went to the Anglican vicar or priest. Said, no more. He said, come on me. Hey. Where the honey said, come on me. I will interpret later. He said, come on me. My throat is itching. Then the pastor, I mean, very concerned. So, have you taken some antibiotics, antihistamine, some some uh, cough mixture, uh, some lozenges, so so for Nini we are doing this. They say, Pastor, you don't understand what I'm talking about. It's not about lozenges. It can mean the fear of my cough. So for being banchine, being banchine. I declare today, Bay will not let you go to the second level. This convention, we are going to the next level, and offense will not let you go to the next level. Say, I believe it. Can I have 10 minutes to finish? I'll do my 45 and I'll be gone. Are you listening to me? Uh, can I go further? You are laughing. It's a very dangerous thing. Ahitophel was so wild that he left his incense and altar and became a one-day militia man. Hmm. Error. And the man whose counsel was an oracle was just like a one who has inquired of an oracle. Now God used his junior man to come and defy his wisdom. He said, who shall go and also give another counsel, counter counsel to Absalom. Listen, the guy was so angry that Papa Penin was able to ask a small boy to do something that he knew was against the laws of God. So number one, go and stand in the gate and steal the hearts of the people and tell them your father is old school, God is no more with him. Also for church, people become offended, they stand here and they will tell any new man who comes to church that the pastor he has no anointing. Now the anointing is the young man. Yami Bofua, Sika Bofua. Are you hearing me? Hey, 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 hey. Today, offense will let you be stupid. Are you hearing what I'm saying? He said, go and take all his concubines. Sleep with them before the whole of Israel. What? Absalom, are you not going to be killed? He did it. And Hushai came and said, no, no. If you follow Ahitophel's way, you'll be killed. Go this way. And when Ahitophel saw that for the first time, he has been despised. Bible says he went to his home and his house and he told them what he has done. Went to the upper chamber, took a rope around his neck and committed suicide. Ladies and gentlemen, we are not dying today. Oh, you didn't hear what I said. May you never commit suicide because of offense in your life. Because when you are offended and you leave, the ordained place of God, what awaits you is distraction and you're rolling to your early grave. Say amen. amen. Can I finish by giving you another man whose name is not wanted by anybody? I have been, I have officiated weddings for years. David this, Isaac this, John this, Patience this, eh? And many names, these new American names. Some names, Jamal, <laughs> and all these names. Chicago. <laughs> How can you name your attack? Chicago West. <laughs> Are you hearing me? So now I'm going to name him Mamprobi. <laughs> Do you hear me? This is another name nobody wants to hear. 
Let us go to Genesis and I'll show you the man. Nobody wants to hear his name. Asafu, your children, what are their names? You. Eh? Jeremy. 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 I to a kakra. Say amen. Now, let, let, let's finish. Let's finish. Revenge is a wicked thing. Tomorrow we will continue, but let me finish with this. Genesis 27, 38 to 40. Quickly, so that I will become uh, a friend of this church. When I come here, I don't like wasting time. Because it's a, the church of veterans. Hmm? Veterans, they can be too known. <laughs> so, when, when you preach, and you don't preach well, and you say things, they'll say, don't bring him here again. I want to come here again. So give me a few minutes to go. Is it not the truth? My defense is truth. My defense is truth. Amen. And Esau, you see that name? Today I want to prove to you that Esau was not cursed. I wish I had the last word. I would name my Ahitophel Esau mode. <laughs> to, prove a, to prove a point. And Esau said, now hear me. Now cool. Some of you wanted to sleep. Now you are not sleeping anymore. Today is a storytelling day. And Esau said unto his father, How's thou but one blessing? Turn to your neighbor and say, One blessing? Say, Father, only one blessing? You mean no blessing? Now let me show you something. My father, bless me. Then he said, Even me also, O oh my father. And Esau lifted up his voice and wept. And wept. Everybody say wept. When you see somebody weeping, it means the person is offended. By betrayal, by rejection, by abandonment. The painful thing is for suffer. His brother, Jake, Jake was a lazy boy. Jake was a lazy boy. Always with mommy. A little pancake. They give him three before daddy eats one. His eggs were like this. The Mokola type. Big bread, butter, jam, six eggs. Milo and condensed milk. When you finish, say, Pastor, pray for me. You will die. Are you hearing me? Say amen. And what hurts me is that the go to crown that they use for that soup, eh? Is Esau's goat? No, no. He was a wild guy. He was the hunter. He was killing. He was sweeping the, the, the pens and so many. He was the hardworking one. Jacob was a dadaba, cocky boy. Are you listening to me? You stole my goat. You stole my blessing. And I have no blessing. But no, who told you Esau was not blessed? Now, listen to this. Listen to me. Behold, that dwelling shall be, be the fatness of the earth and of the dew of heaven from above. Now watch. Something has changed. Go. Did you say I will be like the fatness of the earth? Didn't you say that? Oh. Oh. He said, and by thy soul shall thou live. Actually. And shall say thy brother who? The thief. That is a painful situation you can find yourself in. The thief, I should serve him too. But listen, my brother, and it shall come to pass. This is where the thing is. It shall come to pass after some time, after it has been established, it shall come to pass when thou shalt have dominion. <laughs> Lift up your hand and speak in tongues for one minute. Second, second, libataya. Katuri atanda bahaya du sambahaya. It shall come to pass when you have become restless. When you are settled in your heart, that offense will destroy a person. Listen to what I say. That thou shalt break his yoke from your neck. I won't let anybody's stupidity be a yoke on my neck. You betray me, God bless you. You abandon me, God bless you. You reject me, God bless you. You do me evil, God bless you. Because you see, where I'm going in life is bigger than the rape. 
Atam kakre be di minti no me ben sum bom. Di matem. The more you dim your attempt, the more I drive the Mercedes Benz. That's what it is. I'm going to show you in two seconds. Now, hear this. He said, when? Today, say, I will break the yoke. Say, I will drop it. Oh, are you tired? Shout, I will drop it. He said, thou shalt break his yoke from off thy neck. Listen to verse, that verse 40. And he saw he said, let's go. Then when you go to Genesis 33. Let's go to Genesis 33. Hey, Master, when you read the book of Hebrews chapter 11, verse 20, Master, first two, so I'm not sure I know answer. Count, count, I'm in coffee. Hebrews 11, 20, look at that one. Can you read it? By faith, if your name is not in Hebrews 11, you are not a boxer. Hebrews 11, if you're a champion, your name must appear there. Go and read the whole of Hebrews. If you are not a champion in a champion in this life, eh? forget about Hebrews 11. Esau was there. He said, by faith, Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau. Who told you he was cursed? Concerning the things to come. Come back to 33 of Genesis. Quickly, quickly, quickly. And Jacob lifted up his eyes after swerving him and... <laughs> you see, when you fight the offender... God cannot fight your offender. If you leave your offender, I, I, I hit the power to say, you have now owed me to meet her. <laughs> let God let them meet the ambitious. Laban showed him for you, sir. Hmm. Pastor, don't fight people. Who, they, they laughed at your shoe. Don't, laugh, don't mind them. You didn't sing well. Don't mind them. You were a bad preacher. Don't mind them. You are not handsome. Don't mind them. Don't mind them. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Because of antinism, I'm not going to be a good one. I'm not going to be a good one. I'm not going to be a good one. So whatever you do, somebody will talk about you. You dress, you are dressing too much. You are not dressing a salmon. Are you hearing me? Make up, I can't mean that. Cause I know it's more make up. God will talk about going here tomorrow. Ah, give the Lord a shout. Finish in seven minutes. I'm finishing in seven minutes. Sit down. Ah, di malahaya, mi papa da 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 ya. I feel the spirit. Today, drop it. We are going to leave here with five minutes prayer of those who have carried offense in their heart for years. You are justified to carry that offense. But it won't take you anywhere. Let the yoke be broken from your neck right now. Now, look at something. We have what we call the three-road defense. The three-road defense principle. Of Jacob. When he was coming, he thought Esau was waiting for him in anger. Masa, waiting for you in anger. 31 years, still waiting. Do you know that some people, the fight started from their grandfathers. Fight brought forward. Where are the accountants? Akrimodi carried forward. Are you listening to me? Children are fighting. A mother can tell you, I can own an occasion and I can go in tears and I can't do it. Meanwhile, that is where your husband will be coming from. <clears throat> now, he said, and Jacob lifted up his side and looked and behold, Esau came and within 400 men. Have you seen a poor man with 400 men before? A cursed man, a cursed man doesn't work with 400 men. When I am Today, these people just wanted to come. And that's why they are here with me, the pastors. But when you see Papa, Papa, when Papa is walking, you see that a rich man is coming. <laughs> rich in spirit, rich in anointing, rich in pocket. Are you hearing what I'm saying? When he's coming, land cruises, three, four, umpa, police motor, ubufu, the ambulance, are you listening to me? 
when they can come to your church and come and bully you in your church because the man carries 400 men with him. I mean, when I'm walking. Are you listening to what I'm saying? 400 men, not women, not people, men. Solid men. But he's blessed. 400 men. Now look at this apartment. And he divided his children into Leah and Rachel and unto two handmaidens. Now, <laughs> the first row, in case of any strike, our male servants and their children. Let's look at the next verse. Quickly, quickly. <laughs> and he put the handmaids and their children foremost, in case there was any fight. Akbi Amedan, that was the way. Then the second row of defense was that woman he never loved. I look at me, I look at London. That woman, the woman. No, 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 no. And her children. And then look at what he said. And Rachel and Joseph. Oh, come on, talk to me. Rachel and Joseph, what? One, two, three. By the time you get to the third, Otilo. You see his defense? But, but Esau was not waiting for him. Now look at this. Look at let's go. Four, three, quickly. And he passed over before them and bowed himself to the ground seven times. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Seven times. Until he came near to his brother. Are you okay with me? No rich man bows to a, a poor man seven times. What are you talking about? Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Seven times to show superiority to the other person. A cursed man does not enjoy superiority. Give the Lord a hand. Why? Because he has taken the yoke off his neck. Let's finish. Five minutes more. And I will show you five ways. That one swift. I'm not going to preach it long. Five ways by which, by which you will prove that you have really forgotten about the offense. Five ways to show you have dropped it. Number one, he ran to meet him. You see it? Running to meet is the first sign to show that you have forgotten. You have dropped the offense. It's here, but you have dropped it. Hey, when you don't like somebody, when he appears here, you pass there. Uncle, come. Come, you offer you. We talk about what you say, but she won't offer you. No more beer. Don't run too much. You are Jacob because you look like a bad boy. I hear. I'm Esau. Let's come. Number one, they run. Number two, they embrace. Number three, Santifas made chow saliva. Now look at this. Number one, they met. Number two, he embraced. Number four, he fell on his neck. Falling on the neck is the third level to show that you have dropped it. Master, come go small and he'll go for no. He get go for no. This is how you do it. In this one, it happens between sweethearts. I love it. I listen to me. He did this. And number four, that one we can't do it. He kissed him. Everybody say he kissed him. A born of saliva. Eh? And number five, they went. Running to meet, embracing, falling on neck, kissing, and weeping are five signs to show you have dropped it. Three minutes more. Let's finish and I'll be gone. Let the same scripture, and lifted up his eyes and saw the woman and children and said, Who? two questions, that's number one. Who are those? Esau was just standing there. He said, who are those with thee? If it were you and I, the answer he gave is he'd have slapped him. He said, and he said, the children which God, the God that you, the blessing that you stole from me, the, the children which God has graciously <laughs> given thy servant. He didn't say anything. Let's go further. Then the handmaidens came, and they and their children, and they bowed themselves. 
Kolkata. One of the beautiful men I've seen in this world is the second lady. But she will never bow to you until you are more superior. Do you understand me? Trump's wife comes and he bows to you for what? But if they see that you are superior, more superior than them, there's an automatic reaction of bowing. They bow. Let's go. And he said, the second question, Nizam patrols, lamp princess, high sense refrigerators, Smart TV. It is seven inches. <laughs> Are you hearing me? Money, everything, auto, articulator, bomb. Listen. And he said, What meanest thou by this drove? This drove. Punching camels. This drove. Listen. Which I meant. And he said, these are to find grace <laughs> in the sight of my Lord. No rich, blessed man will call a cursed poor man my Lord. Who told you someone was cursed? Ahitophel didn't do what Esau did. Today, don't be an Ahitophel. Be an Esau. Let's finish. And Esau said, I'm about to finish. And this one said, Oh, Land Cruiser V8, in here I drove GT 2019. <laughs> oh, Mercedes 320 Formatic. Okay, oh, in here may back. Oh, it's up. It's up. Yeah, 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 you come in the pool. You come up here. You come when you come to my house. I drive the Ferraris. I drive the Lamborghini Countaches. I drive the Teslas. He said, Jacob, not because I am proud. Not because I hate you. But I have enough. He he said, I have enough, my brother. The brother tells you that he was not offended. He can keep that thou hast unto thyself. I declare tonight, anyone who has offended you, if you forgive that person, they will come to Accra this year, and this will be your prophetic answer to them. I have enough, oh brother. Stand to your feet. Lift up your hand for one minute. Lift up your hand. I'm not joking. No. Tonight, this is the message God gave to me. That most of the time, we look outside too much. I call the demon. We are binding. We are demanding. Sango, we are demanding. We are dividing the spots. Tonight, it's about our hearts. Offense will let you kill yourself or be blessed. Are you an Ahitophelic person and an Isoic person? Tonight, I want you to close your eyes. But you see, it is the oil that breaks the yoke. And it is the oil that lifts up that burden. You were raped by an uncle. And you have said, well, lie. I'll not forgive. I am traumatized. You have been destroyed. You have been castigated. You have been denied. You have been backbitten. Whatever it is tonight, anything that has been in your heart, even it could be your pastor, it could be your, your wife, it could be your husband who did that thing to you. I want, if two people will come forward, my work is done. Come quickly. Please. This is conventional. Don't be shy. Come. So, so for, I've tried. I've tried. And that offense, I can't drop it. Tonight, come. Tonight, come. Tonight, come. Before I come to deal with demons tomorrow, 
we must deal with this one first. So that those who are coming today will have the upper hand over the enemy. But the enemy uses legalities and technicalities to come against us. Hosea 7. He said, when the Lord was about to heal Ephraim, an iniquity of Ephraim was covered. And the Lord did not heal them anymore. Thank you for listening to the message. Visit us on www.harvestinternationalministries.org. Send us an email through office at harvestinternationalministries.org or call us on 0302-222-372 or 0302-229-109. God bless you.